All right. Uh, now it's 12:37 a.m. on October 6th, 2012. I am Beak Supreme, um, the person behind Beakobotics, and um, come up with the idea of this nest pie box. And um, no, okay. Um, and I worked on uh, a previous project. I was working on is my uh, SNES pie box that is Halloween themed which I show in some of the videos. I mean it's functional in terms of the Raspberry Pi is concerned. It's just not aesthetically complete. Here's the top and I'm going to put a lighting system inside here. Uh, this is where the Raspberry Pi sits. Still smells like paint after a few days. Here's the nice wonderful top of it with the glowing beak children. Uh, people call them kitty cats and um, glow-in-the-dark spray paint which you will see see there's the glowing beak children here is the glowing inside of the raspberry pi box and this is with spray paint that this is done and but you know it's getting uh, it's october now and it's getting the colder time of year and uh it's just getting a little more difficult to spray paint I mean, it's raining right now so let's say if right now I wanted to paint some of this stuff, um, well, it's not very good to spray inside this apartment uh, with this spray paint because of fumes and so forth. Can't really do it outside because of uh, it's just raining and it's just not very good. So I got this brush on paint, which is for hobbies and all that, and um. It doesn't say anything about fumes or ventilation on here, um, so it should be safe uh, to use indoors. And this paint glows in the dark. Uh, well, um, I can just uh, prove that it does, just for uh, what well, I did in a previous video, but just to get the point across, make sure that uh, you know that it does. Okay. See this might you might be able to see this glows a little bit. Well, I'll make it glow even better. An ultraviolet LED, 380 nanometers, and now it glows a lot better. See the bottom's not glowing very much, and now it does. And here's the. Uh, inside top of my uh, snuff supply box. See it really glows now. And uh... Oh yeah. And here's the beak children. Yep. They glow. And um, there's even beak children on the bottom. There they are. But uh, you can make this glow really good. <laughs> you write on it based on how uh, much. Uh, is this ultraviolet. This is long wave ultraviolet. It's 380 nanometers, uh, even longer. Uh, wave ultraviolet is 405 nanometers like Blu-ray and typical black light but um, see how effective this is oh that's the neighbors now on the topic of um, of um, you know I don't want to miss out on something um, and um, don't let me forget that I want to show you how to write on a old television using ultraviolet light. I feel like kind of doing that now, but I don't want to screw up the purpose of this video because I don't really get into this kind of stuff. Okay, I'll put a little hot glue down in there to hold that good. And we'll hold this one good. 
guy. We'll hold this one right here. Alright, all of these are glued good. Um, they, uh, they're, they're pretty tight on there. They don't really move. Um, positioning them this way, laying them down, um, in this uh, methodology, uh, just taking them, as you can see this, just laying it horizontal like that, um, it's with and just I mean it holds both in one way because it elevates the the board up and it levels it um, and it allows for about a quarter inch of air to get underneath um, the Raspberry Pi and to cool it and then these um, these little things here what they do is they keep it from moving and they fit almost flush with the board. And uh, so they, they look, actually this is an improvement. Um, it looks better than my previous um, board. And uh, uh, my pie box, it just all around looks better and it's just a better way to do it. Um, now I don't know if I will have one um, over here or not. I, you know, I don't know. And let's see if I could put one in front of this. Um, I, I don't know if I could do that either. Well, actually, Moosin's hot glue, I find that I can. Maybe put one in front of the Ethernet, but I might not need it. Um, it works. Um, really, I can't move it. This this fits really good. The, I did. It, it is a little bit loose. I intentionally did it that way because when I go to paint it, um, the paint will take up some space. And um, so uh, that's that. Um, but anyway. I'm going to go ahead and take and uh, cut these out here. And if you hear music in the background, remember that's not mine. That's not in my apartment. That's the people next door. And I can easily take this out here. It's just fits even easier than uh, the previous um, configuration of the pie box that I had done. And uh, those voices you might hear, they're not mine. Uh, it's the people next door. They're, uh, they're young people in their early 20s, possibly even late teens, I'm not sure. But they're, they're um, kind of loud. and It's alright, I mean, don't bother me. It's just that if it's in this recording, you know, keep in mind that it's happening. It's not me. And you know, I've heard these horror stories about how the uh, music and movie industry or the TV industry will get on to, uh, they'll confront YouTube about alleged copyright infringement and all that just because somebody makes a video talking about something and somebody else has got the TV on in the background. And so the whole piracy argument comes up, which is totally absurd and stupid. I don't even believe in piracy anyway. Things are done. Um, and just in case I decide to put another, another in here. I don't want to cut my thumb off. I could probably have one with a knife. Sharpened it really good. 
good last year. Okay. And all these little stringy things for me to put that on there. Put some hot glue, put that there. Um, have some options. I could put one right here, one of those mirror mounts. Where does it fit? Do I got enough space to I do actually. Can I fit it right there? Might. I might do that. I don't know. Um, fit it underneath the Ethernet. That wouldn't be such a good idea because of the event that I can't pull on, pull on that. Put it way out here, it's kind of kind of an issue. Uh, and there's the little things went underneath the USB. Um, it's an issue there. Um, this really isn't a concern. I'm going to fit one on here. Well, do that, i got to worry about the plug. Really, I don't really have to do any of these. Um, I can push down on this and uh, not really a problem. on this here and then there's two right there. It'd be nice if stuff was positioned better on this board to like not interfere with stuff and not be a problem. This board, the problem with this, this Raspberry Pi board is it was not made really, I mean there's no real official way to mount it. You basically got to find a way. There, well there's no case for it. It was not made to fit in a case. It was just made to sit there like this and be plugged up to power and computer peripherals and so forth. Mm, maybe I should have made those a little closer together. Oh well. Um, let's uh, it's an issue. Oh well. It's just a little bit too loose. Oh well. <laughs> and uh you know, there's the HDMI plug, all that fits nicely. And what I'll do next time I use uh, the acrylic, which is kinda like plexiglass for anybody who's wanting to know that, and about uh, halfway through my video, I've got about fifteen minutes left. Is yeah, on my previous pie box. What I did is I recessed it in, pushed it essentially up against this. And, um, that's not how I'm going to do it this next time. Uh, I'm going to actually leave it right in about flush with this, so that when this top comes down, it won't interfere with it, if you can see how this is. Um, you see, and I had to cut stuff out, and it's, it's an issue, so I'll, I'll make it flush there. Another thing is... I won't have to notch these things out anymore if I have it um, flush this here um, or this inside here. Uh, what I'll just have to do is just take and drill a hole. Whereas I'll do, I'll probably melt a hole because I don't know how well the drill would work on this. You might chip it or whatever. But um, I found if you just take a round object and um, you get the speed going enough on the Dremel, which you can do, and just melt a spot right in there. I'll punch out real good. Um, now, let's see what this is. This to just my old some. Um, well, I'm going to cut out this one. Oh yeah, this 
that's that UN squadron that I got at the uh, 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 Joe's Records for. They had it priced at a dollar because the label's all messed up and it's just a yucky looking cartridge or whatever. In the back of it, yeah, it's just all yucky looking. And yeah, apparently nobody wanted it, but I'd take the game board out and I'll still play it. And uh, but it was a good deal. I got this one for a dollar there. That's just how they had it marked. them back in there to hold it in place. type of screw bit but there's this 4.5 millimeter and Nintendo does on their systems these 4.5 millimeter they use different bottoms like you know, alright was I going to use this for something else? Did I, did I cut this one earlier? yeah that's right I was showing how to do it um, that's just a case as a precaution. I'm gonna cut through this top since it's ugly. And uh really great. Now, if I made a video on my previous Nest Pie box, it just would have took longer because I had to sit there and look at it and decide what I wanted to do. 
and I'll show you how this works. I'm going to begin to cut into it so we can stack them. Got held together, and I start cutting it with a Dremel. And the problem on these is this, see, it's elevated a little bit there. Is this whole part right here is a little bit too tall. So I'm going to cut that out. Now the reason why I got these craft sticks is to, uh, if you ever notice how ceilings are in businesses where they lower the ceiling by using a ceiling tile so they can conceal and hide all the um, uh, electrical lighting and all that and just recess the lighting up in the ceiling. It's for the same purpose. So I can mount these LEDs on the surface and hide them basically within there so you don't get to see all these wires and all that. And just make it look a little bit better.
Yeah, I got about three minutes. And after this, I might do an, ul an ultraviolet video showing how to write on a uh, television screen with uh, UV light. You know, it's pretty uh, beakish. Um, and I'll explain how it's done. Um, it's pretty fascinating stuff that most people don't seem to pay attention to, but it's really cool. Now, it does not work on the new TVs, uh, the uh, LCDs or LED TVs. Uh, the only thing I could, well, uh, maybe a new, one of the new TVs they work on is plasma because they have a phosphor layer just like a CRT. They just use a different method to uh, excite the uh, phosphors uh, in there, uh, which they use plasma to do it instead of using uh, uh, a cathode ray tube or electro, well actually in it, well in a cathode ray tube, that's the type of thing on the bottom. I'm talking about the electron gun in a CRT shoots an energy beam and, and uh, excites the phosphors on the screen and makes them glow. But there's something else you can use to uh, energize those phosphors. It's not a uh, it's not an electron beam. It's something else. Now we can take this top and uh, put it on there. And um, yeah. Right. So we take our raspberry. Hi, bring it this way with the analog down because we're not going to use the analog really, probably at all. We opt in and it just sits in there. And we take this and I need to cut out for uh, the USB. got a few seconds and this is how we uh, do it here and um, so yeah and then uh, you just keep stacking them up on top like this and uh, that's how you do it it's uh, pretty beakish and not very hard alright so until next time I am Beak Supreme and this video is for the Beaklebotics YouTube channel on how to make a uh, Raspberry Pi box out of Super Nintendo cartridges